Good afternoon, I'm Mr. H. Thank you for joining me for this video where we are continuing the procedures for solving linear homogeneous second order differential equations except we're presenting you a nuance or a peculiarity you need to be aware of. B square minus 4AC greater than 0 represents two real solutions because you have two different roots. The key word over here being different but what really is different and it can be a matter of degrees. Consider these two examples, x minus four times x plus three equals zero, x is equal to four comma minus three. Two real solutions, they're different. Consider this right here, x minus five times x plus five equals zero, x is equal to five comma minus five. Two different roots, they're real solutions, but they're numerically the same, they differ only by sign. One is positive, one is minus. This right here is certainly quite different. This one is certainly quite similar, differing only by means of the negative. But however, it's two real solutions because they're two different items. Again, I'll say, but they're visually quite alike. And that's the nuance we're talking about. When you have a peculiarity that arises in this form, where you're going to have x is equal to plus and minus, let's just say a numerically they're the same but they differ in the sign what is it that you can do you have two options the basic option you're already familiar with and the new option i'm going to talk to you in this video let's look at the previous option or the basic option you're aware of and then let's bring in this peculiarity or the different way of presenting your same answer when you're looking at this you know now you know you're looking at r square e to the rx minus 3 e to the rx is equal to zero because you're bringing varieties of derivatives with respect to that first order, second order, or zero order, and they come into play. You isolate e to the rx, you have r squared minus 3 equals 0. You have here this going away. You could take it on the other side and zero out. r squared is equal to 3, r is equal to plus and minus root 3. You know the original way of presenting this answer. Your differential equation solution is y is equal to a e right root 3x plus b e minus root 3x. That's one way of presenting this answer. But the other way that you can present this answer, and I'll show you why that is the case, is this. y is equal to a hyperbolic cosine root 3x plus b hyperbolic sine root 3x. These are two equivalent answers but visually they're quite different. Again, you're looking at two roots, minus root three and positive root three. They're different, but they're visually the same, differing only by means of sign, the positive and the negative, and that's what we're looking at. So how is it that that original answer, this can be presented in terms of hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine? The remainder of the video will talk about that. The original question is right here. When you're looking at something which is hyperbolic sine, nx. You know in terms of the definition of the hyperbolic sign, you're looking at e to the nx minus e to the power of minus nx over 2. When you're looking at hyperbolic cosine nx, you're looking at e to the nx plus e to the minus nx over 2. You can push these twos on the other side. You end up seeing 2 hyperbolic sine nx is equal to e to the nx minus e to the minus nx. When you do that, you're looking at 2 hyperbolic cosine nx, which is equal to e to the nx plus e to the minus nx. Everything here is nothing too out of the ordinary. Add them and minus them and come up with two different equations. When you add them up, your outcome is this. You have two hyperbolic sine nx plus two hyperbolic cosine nx. This is us adding them up. You will have things cancel out. You will have here equal to two e to the nx. That's equation number one. Equation number two, when you subtract them, you'll have two hyperbolic sine nx minus two hyperbolic cosine nx is equal to, look at what cancels out. This cancels out, you have minus two e to the minus nx. That's exactly what's working out. But in all of these instances, the twos can cancel out. You can literally erase the twos because they're present everywhere. Divide everything by two and you've eliminated the twos. What we can do now is shuffle things on. You see you have a minus, take the minus on the other side and it'll flip everything around. When you take this minus over here, it'll flip this equation around. You'll have hyperbolic cosine nx minus hyperbolic sine nx is equal to positive e to the minus nx. You see I have a hyperbolic cosine I have over here the plus, order does not matter, I want to switch things around just so everything looks consistent. 
I'm going to switch this around the positive sign. This equation one, I'm going to flip everything around because order does not matter around the positive sign. You'll have hyperbolic cosine nx plus a hyperbolic sign nx. Now look what we have, two equations. Look what we have right here. We have something which looks of the representative form y is equal to e to the nx plus e to the minus nx. I know there are coefficients here. We don't have to worry too much about that right now, but that's exactly what we have. We can make these substitutions. I have e to the nx, I have e to the minus nx, I have e to the nx, e to the minus nx, and you bring in the substitutions. When you bring in the substitution, you're gonna bring two other letters so we don't confuse too much. I'm gonna have here y is equal to c. I'm bringing a different uh, constant c and d, then we'll bring everything back into a and b. I have c times e to the nx. e to the nx is equal to all of this. Hyperbolic cosine nx plus hyperbolic sine nx plus. I'm bringing in a new constant d, then I have e to the minus nx, all of that which is equal to this, and I'm going to bring it in here. Hyperbolic cosine nx minus hyperbolic sine and x. If you were to open that C and D and distribute everything across, you would have common terms. The common terms would be your hyperbolic functions. You would have hyperbolic cosine and x and then you'd have C plus D. Think about it. If you open up everything, you can isolate the hyperbolic cosine. It will be attached one over here, one over here to C and D. You can isolate them. Then you'll have a plus. Isolate the hyperbolic sine nx, and when you do that, it'll be attached to a c, and it will be attached to a minus d, c minus d. Let a equal c plus d, let b equal c minus d. Bring them into your substitutions, y is equal to, this becomes a, hyperbolic cosine nx, this becomes b plus b, hyperbolic sine nx. And this represents your general form, which you can utilize for these type of situations where you have two different real solutions, numerically they're the same, but only differing by means of positive and negative. Exactly what you see. Numerically they're the same, but they differ by sign. How can you transform this answer into this? You can. y is equal to a hyperbolic cosine root 3x plus b hyperbolic sine root 3x. And that right there can represent another way or another form of your solution to this style of differential equation where your roots are two different roots. Numerically they're the same but differing only by sine positive and negative. When you see something like this you can write it as something like that and there would be nothing wrong in doing so. So we will end with this. At any point you have a differential equation solution which is looking like this. You see you have numerically same numbers here but differing only by sign. You can rewrite your solution if you want as this hyperbolic cosine nx plus b hyperbolic sine nx. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. If you saw a question like this, d square y or dx square minus 9y equals 0, it would generate this type of scenario. Because what would you have? After you do your e to the rx substitutions, the varieties of substitutions, you'd have r square minus 9 is equal to 0, r is equal to plus and minus 3, root of 9, plus and minus 3. You can do your answer in two ways. y is equal to a e to the 3x plus b e to the minus 3x, or you can do y is equal to a hyperbolic cosine 3x plus b a hyperbolic sine 3x and you can see the negative doesn't show up over here the negative shows up over here the negative gets consumed in the procedure i've shown you earlier in this video so keep these peculiarities in mind thank you for watching have a good day